Welcome to this latest edition of The Real Deal Podcast, episode 806. I'm your host, Surreal Gerald Quinn, joined by, of course, Robert Sapp, as we look at a week 18. It sounds still sounds funny to say that. Week 18 of the NFL season, 17 games in the books. Uh, Robert Sapp, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing really well. Doing really well. Good to be here. Good to be talking football. Yeah, I just I'm yeah still trying to wrap my head about around 18 weeks of football, 17 games. Um, who we, as always we begin with who won the week. Um, I could have went in two different directions uh, with this, but you know ultimately I went went with the went with the Vegas Raiders. I also thought about Pittsburgh because I I still <laughs> try to figure out like Pittsburgh boy. Was I would have took any amount of money that they didn't have to be in the playoffs oh, two weeks ago, a month ago, or forget that, that just basically uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, or maybe, maybe even last week, uh, considering what happened uh, in Jacksonville. Certainly, we'll get to that. But I had the Vegas Raiders. Um, they go through a coaching change. They go through a tragedy off the field. They go through you know a number of, of injuries and what have you that you know. Every NFL team goes through over the course of a long season, that this being the longest season in NFL history. Uh, what are your thoughts on on that choice? Did you have a similar choice, a different choice, or do you think? I have a different choice. Okay. Uh, but I do want to comment on the Raiders really quickly. Um, it, great win. They won. Perfect. And you had them as who won the week. Um, uh, I say Raiders. That game. Um, the most impressive thing that came come out that game was I'm um, Herbert. Herbert. Save, save the game. Save the game. I, uh, I, unless unless most, he's your person that won the week. No, I, I, I just wanted I, the most impressive. The reason why I'm not even considering the Raiders is because they're not even the most impressive thing in that okay. game. Gotcha. Herbert gotcha. was the most impressive thing in yeah. that game. I agree with that. Me. I agree with Who that. Who won the week for me? The Titans. The Titans won the week. It's not, it's insane that they're the number one seed. Yeah. Really no. Insane yeah. to me. <laughs> Um, and so I, I, it, I mean, like, yeah, it was against Houston, yada, 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 whatever. Yeah, forget They're, about that. It's the big picture. The big the picture, AFC, yeah. And they lost their best player, not just like last week. No. They lost their best player, what was that, six weeks ago? It was, a, it was been, it's been a while, at least, at least six weeks. Yeah. It's been at six weeks since they said, yeah. It's probably yeah. longer. You're right. It's probably longer now because you're right. Because that was 12. Um, I think it was before week 12. I can easily. But it's been minimum but, six weeks. But the bit, the the greater point is they overcame that adversity and continued to win without their uh, unequivocal best, best player. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know any other team in the league that could sustain that. Yeah. I I just because that they're your unequivocal best player. Yeah, I mean, Brave was a beast. I mean, man. he's a beast. So, um. The the Titans winning winning that we we we've seen teams all this we talked about it, especially throughout the AFC um, all year long lose expected win games like we'll talk about one um, right. on this po- very podcast so we've seen it happen so even though it's Houston um, it was the, the Houston that kind of rolled out there earlier in the year um, uh, point being they are the number one seed in the AFC. That is my pilot to me. So he's the one to week for that. I can't disagree with that. Um, with that choice, even I mean, I still went with the Raiders, but I can't. That's I mean, that was a hell of a game by the Raiders. That really was. It was a hell of a game. It was. Yeah, I mean, even just I mean, even with the, the like, I guess it can kind of be. I could kind of be similar to yours. From a, it's like a, a cumulative of, uh, situation as well, because the, the Raiders, like we know that they have some nice pieces, but they're not. Uh, the Raiders are not a, a very good team. Like they're they're not contenders or what have you. And again, to get through the adversity that they got through in a brutal division, which I mean that division is insanely good. That there are no bad teams in that division. Even Denver's not a bad team. Um, I I, I give the I give the coach all the credit in the world. He by the way deserves probably deserves might not get that job, but he deserves the job. Um, from my standpoint, he earned it. Um, and they play clearly play hard for him. 
Um, but I, I, I'm definitely impressed with just what they did and, and in terms of how they did it, too. I mean, they, they're turning over the ball and still winning these games, <laughs> pulling these games out their asses uh, with very little room for error. And they, you know, they had their own injuries, uh, you know, with Waller, with, you know, Waller being out and, and what have you. And of course, you know, our, already talked about what happened, you know, with, with Ruggs early in the season. So um, both teams were definitely worthy of it. Um, I guess I mean Pittsburgh fans are like sure they Pittsburgh I'm sure the Pittsburgh fans feel like they won the week considering what happened in terms of where they oh that's where, it. I, they, they they won they were on, they were, they were on man Pittsburgh I could feel that's the actually a yeah yeah the <laughs> Pittsburgh I could feel it when I was watching this we were watching watching the uh the, the Sunday night game I like I, when that game just got closer and closer and it's like field goal and it's like, you know, then it gets tired, like, ooh, what what is going on? All Pittsburgh was on my mind the entire game. That was good. Of course the you know, at the the heart of that, you know, of that game was, you know, what was gonna happen um, you know, with Pittsburgh and what could possibly happen with Pittsburgh once of course Jacksonville. Well that's uh, what I'm saying. The, the only run. reason that that was a question was because Jacksonville be in Indianapolis. Yes. Yeah. That was like, like that was when you looked at that scenario, the first one was Jack Indianapolis had to lose to Jacksonville. So you couldn't, I didn't even entertain any of the other no. ones like no. that. No. Like there's no way. That's not no. happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. By the time it gets to that night, and you're like, all of this is on the line. This is a crazy amount of stuff on the line for one game. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the NFL be. won the week because that, yeah. that was a, that's a way to go. That's a way. That's a drop the mic on the season. Yeah, no, that was like oh my goodness, just the, yeah, in the second guessing and just um, yeah, yeah, and the Raiders winning eliminated um San Diego uh Chargers, uh, shit. Los Angeles, sorry, right. the Chargers, and um and brought. Pittsburgh, one of the top franchises in the NFL, into the playoffs, yep. saved that last game from being um, Big Ben's last game ever. Yep. Yeah, um, right there, like all of those different dynamics that you pull in just one game. Yeah, Crazy. there was a lot. No, it, it, yeah, it was a lot. There was, there was a lot going on uh, from that standpoint. So, a lot of winners this week uh, from that standpoint. Um, real or not. Um, so ratings came out um, a couple of days ago, and ratings were up like seventeen percent. Yeah, yeah. The high, the highest rated season since two thousand fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Um, with a seventeen game season, eighteen weeks. Yeah. We real or not, eighteen game season is coming. Like I, I, I just feel I feel like I'm just gonna come out and say it's real. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, 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 like, I'm gonna jump in on this one really quick because I, I, I came to the aha when I, when I heard. So 18 game season absolutely real. Like it's not, it's not even a thing. Um, it's definitely this, this definitely a thing. And what really crystallized in my head even before the games last week or before the games was when, when I, I it might even been an interview with Goodell, but it was definitely different people in NFL office and they described the 18th week as a season finale so it crystallized my head like oh that's what they're doing with the 18th week and all the games were a little bit flexible Fle by uh, flexible f-l-e-x a a b a b l e meaning that um they could play around with which games got which prime time slots which they never did with week 17 yeah. so they were trying something a little bit different then they added on. We talked about it when they did the divisional games. Now with the 18th week, what they are what they are intentionally plotting for are for the best season finales. And yeah. they hit a home run. The NFL knows what they're doing, and yeah. I will shut up from now on yeah. about the schedule. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They 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 want it. They want to punctuate the end of their season. Yeah. It'll still be tricky. They got lucky. Um in a certain sense, in terms of what will always be tricky is the end of the season and who plays, who doesn't play, who sits, who doesn't sit for all the variety of reasons that happen in the season. But having that little bit of flexibility to determine which games 
our own prime time gives them the best possible chance to make those the most meaningful games as possible. That's what they're doing with the 18th week. That's what we didn't see before. No. Or at least I didn't see that. Before. I didn't, see I didn't that know. Either. I didn't see that coming until until they. I mean, I I think they held it close to best because it that is kind of cringy because early on people are talking about all the eighth game game injuries yada yada yada. By the time we get to the eighth game game, eighteenth week of the season, nobody was talking about that at all. No, nobody was talking about that. No. So um, then they could unveil like what the eighteenth week really was was a test for this new. Um, yeah, this was, this, this, yep, this was a test run. Yep, this was a test run. It was highly. I mean, you, you just quoted the numbers. Yeah, we, you just yeah. quoted the numbers. Yeah, yeah. It real is not. It, 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 it yes, this is a thing. It is. It is etched in stone. Until it's going to have to be proven now, since it happened so well the first time. Now it's actually going to have to be proven over multi seasons that this is not a good thing. Because right. all the owners are going to see is those dollar signs. Oh, and no, all no, those no. all the arguments. Woo, you're going to have to you're going to have to come with some hardcore data about how it's hurting players over a long period of time. So maybe next collective bargaining agreement, but not until then. Listen, I, I'm telling you right now, this Yeah. Oh, this it's is, a thing. Oh, this is a risk. Yeah, and, and if I'm here's what you do if you are the players association, just try to get as much money as you possibly can get in the next yeah. season. Right? And just accept it. Just accept it. It's going to just, just try to get as much, grab as much money, go bid, just ask for it. The moon, ask for whatever in terms of the money. And just yeah. accept it. That's what you do. Yeah. Don't, even, don't even try to strategize on trying to fight it. No. <laughs> it's not going to happen from that standpoint. You're not going to win that, that fight. It's not even a battle. It's, it's like just you, your job, if I'm, if I'm DeMar Smith, I'm the players' association. I'm, my thing is, how can I get y'all the most money? And just, just, just take the money and keep it moving. That's it. So, yeah, we both agree that's going to be real sooner than later. Uh, Mike Tomlin, as um, in terms of him doing the best coaching, his best coaching job of his, you know, now illustrious career, real or not. Um, best coaching job of his career. Nah, I, I actually think since we've seen Antonio Brown pop off so many times, <laughs> just handling that group when they were all together and he kept all that under wrap, that probably, yeah. that probably is bad. What I will say, because I, I've said, I stay, I've, st- I've been very consistent on this this entire time we've been talking. Pittsburgh is a championship level defense. So half the team is championship level. Absolutely, championship. That is a championship. Um, yeah, it is. You can run against them. Nah, you can run against them. No, they're running defense. Nah, stop, stop, stop. Against they're them. in plenty of championships. They're, they're championship defense. I'm not doing that. Nope. But that offense, you're absolutely right. Was not was not playoff caliber. So the fact that they're in the playoffs is an incredible coaching job. My problem is it's not even the best coaching job this season. So no, I'm not. I'm not talking about. No, no, I know. I know. I know. You're 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 personal, you're going off career. himself. So what I'm saying is, it w- does not feel as heavy a lift to lift that offense up to playoff caliber, not championship caliber, but playoff caliber. Um, then um, some of the then the coaching job he's had to do with those personalities, even as talented as they were in the past. So I'm gonna say not real. For those reasons. Yeah, I'm going to say real. Um, I, this team, to me, is, despite how good the defense is, is very, to me, they're le- from top to bottom, they're the least most talented team that he, frankly, has had in uh, probably a decade. Um, and in a brutal AC, not ACC, AFC, brutal division, despite the inconsistencies of the teams and the injuries to some teams in that division, still was a blue division. That, that division still was right, was, I, I would say, probably the second best division behind the um, AFC West. Um, they had so many, it was so many opportunities for them to just go in the tank and be like, you know what, we're going to just rebuild for the future. No one, if he finishes with a losing record, which he never has, which is just remarkable. It's, 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 that's, I, I just think that's one of the most underrated 
uh, coaching coaching uh, numbers in, in football right now. The fact that he's never had a losing record being just a million years in the game. But if he finishes with a losing record, it's like, okay, cool. That's not no biggie uh, from that standpoint. Um, his team was not, no one projected him to make the playoffs. Nobody, most people projected him to finish with a losing record. Uh, people were killing Pittsburgh before the season as being just, you know, they were just going to be a bad football team. Um, so I say, I to me, I say, I think it is his best um, coaching job. So we, we disagree from that stand, or disagree from that standpoint. But definitely with the 18 game season, that's that's going that's going to happen. Black Monday, um, of course, we have a number of coaches coaches fired. Uh, even some even before Black Monday um, came. Even I think Fangio Fangio was out Saturday, wasn't he? I think or Friday or Saturday. Um, and then, you know, the judge, <laughs> this guy, uh, was, um, out, you know, Tuesday. Um, I rank, I rank these jobs from, to me, uh, from one to six, as far as I think job in terms of if I were a coaching, if I were uh, a head coach and, uh, you know, was looking for a job and, if, you know, was a, a head top coaching prospect, um, first of all, give me Give me your rankings and give me your overall thoughts on on these uh, firings. Yeah, I, did we, I think we call pretty much all of them. I think there were a couple um, that that uh, I might have been a little bit on the fence. I didn't one. call. I didn't think the Flores were, one. I had, the Flores one caught me off guard. The Flores was surprised. Flores, Flores yeah. were just. But but we, what we did say is there's always a couple of shots. Yeah, in there. Yeah, we did they say just, that. Yeah. You just can't call. Yeah, you just can't call. One, and that was one of them. Uh, yeah. So that, yeah, that that one, that one. But everybody else is, is uh, you know, you, are the Raiders going to retain their coach? Mm-hmm. In term? In, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I don't know. Yeah. Don't um, know. yeah. So um, I'm just interested because they just saw. Anyway, um, so uh, you want me to rank the teams? Rank the jobs that are opening. The jobs. Oh, Jaguars. Yep. Number one. Yep. And it's not even close. They have a yep. number one pick too. Yeah. And they got the right. You can, you can foundationally, you can, this can yep. be this, you know, we've, we've been, we've been fans of teams that have really um, built their, um, their squads up through foundational picks early on. So you, you have a chance here. You have a chance here. So Jag, Jaguars, Jaguars is not even close. Um, after that, I'm going to go, uh, I'll probably go then, um, Vikings, Dolphins, you can flip them, Dolphins, Vikings. I don't, I don't necessarily have the hugest preference over either of those. I would probably say I like the Dolphins a little bit better because, uh, of that defense. Um, I think you have a young promising quarterback. I'm fine with, with Tua. You need more offensive weapons on there. You saw what happened. You gave him an offensive weapon, how that flourished. So adding more pieces. I think there are less pieces. My problem with the bike is their age, particularly the age of their quarterback. Yeah. Um, I don't like, and, you know, like that. that that's, why would, that's why they were close to being last. Yeah. 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 So that, that, that would, that would be like the sticking point, like right there. Um, I want no parts of Giants of Bears at all. That's why they said no <laughs> parts of Giants of Bears. No. Um, and the Broncos are interesting as long as Aaron Rodgers is interesting. That's why I that, yep. Yep. That's, that's why, that's why I had him too. Yep, yep. That's absolutely. Why I was bad absolutely. That, that I was absolutely. like, man, he can they would be the Super Bowl next year. Like yep. that's it could happen just like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jacksonville is without question, hands down number yep. one. Um, I like Justin Fields, and I think that actually I think Bears have I I I, I think that Bears team is actually pretty good. I, I just think that Nagy. I mean, I I really need to we, see them under competent. Yeah, I just need to see yeah. what you're right. He poisoned the well yeah, so much yeah. as I don't even know what it is. Yeah. At at Chicago, I just want no part of it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So maybe maybe I just need to see competency. Yeah, yeah. Get an do. adult in the room. That's yeah. that's what we just need an adult in the room. An intern coach. Just an adult. Man, it's man, who are some bad coaches in the league? Man, and the Giants bad. are a 
dumpster fire. Yo, they are so we're gonna get to the Giants more as the podcast uh goes along, but they yeah, that that, that they, franchise is spiraling. They're spiraling. Their, their franchises may be they they could be the worst franchise in football right now. They have no clue what they're doing. That's why the Bears and Giants have no clue what they're doing. That's why they but have. At least, at least no the Bears have Justin Fields. What they're sure, if Nagy didn't destroy him, <laughs> I'm sure. And honestly, when I like just like yeah, nah, I'm not so I was anyways. Yep, but the the organization has no clue. No clue. No, both need need organization. No, has no clue. You no. can't. Play, I don't care what quarterback. Uh, you can't. You no. can't. Uh, Organizationally, they no. They have no no clue. This well, fuck. Well, well, I mean, according to Mr. Joe Judge, you know, we have a there was a culture that was cultivating a strong foundation that can't be Whatever. measured by wins and losses. Oh, word! <laughs> that's a that's a new metric. That's a new metric. We don't measure wins and losses anymore. No, no read read that one one more time. Read the, read the quote one more time. <laughs> no, that was that wasn't direct quote, but that was I was paraphrasing it. Yeah, no, that's the not sorry. Yeah. That Say that paraphrase mean, one more time. That first part. We're cultivation, cultivating that is foundation. It. We're cultivating what does that in cultivating <laughs> foundation? You didn't make up those words. He said those no, words. He did. Say words. You didn't make up those words. We're I cultivating a strong a foundation, foundation. A foundation that's going in the right direction. Basically, you don't see. You don't see. No, God but in. can't be defined. First of all, <laughs> wait, we're cultivating a foundation. So you you haven't even built a foundation. You're just cultivating it. You're gathering up the materials for which you will eventually one day build a foundation. Oh. But even when you build that foundation, you won't even be able to measure it and win some offers. Oh man, oh, man. we got yeah. Speaking of, yeah, we you got, can go on. home, please. Yeah, we got sir. yeah. We speaking of, yeah. We got to get the disappointment. We gotta, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> you can go home, sir. All right. So biggest <laughs> disappointments. Um. I had Indianapolis number one. Uh, yeah, that good. was that was one of the worst regular season it's losses not, that I can remember. Not, that's that is hard. It was, I, and I watched a lot of that game, and I'm just as I'm watching, I'm just like, is this really happening? Now yeah. I know coming into that game, I knew all the numbers as far as the past record. They hadn't won in Jacksonville since 2014. Nobody cares, Jacksonville. But nobody, but forget about that. Yeah, fuck all that. Whatever. No, they have a pass. This is yeah. the worst team in football, yes. and, and you need to make the playoffs. You yes. need to go to make the playoffs. Where you win and end, and no ties, yes. nobody. You don't have to depend on nobody yes. else. If you win the game, you are in the playoffs. Yep. And you go out there and you can't lose this game. You can't. No. You can't lose it. You know. You just can't. There's, you were, there's they were. What no, were they like a 14, 14 and a half point favorite. Yeah, yeah. There's no acceptable anything. And I listen to a lot. You know what I love to do. I love to go and listen to fake coat, a gold pie, everything. No one, no one took any other side than this is embarrassing and it can't happen. It just can't flat out can not happen. Yeah. You cannot happen. You yeah. may not lose to the worst team in football <laughs> when you need to get when you need this win to get the playoff. Yes. You you just may not do. No. You may not. Yeah, they. That's yeah. as as a fan of a team that lost to Jaguars. It makes you sick physically. No loss this season hurt more than that one. That would hurt. For sure. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that would hurt. Yeah. It's just yeah. inexcusable. You if you are anywhere near a competent team, it's inexcusable to lose to them. The Patriots beat them fifty to who? <laughs> because. They're the Jaguars. They just don't make mistake after mistake after mistake. Oh, there's, there, there's no way. It, this disappointment might not even be a big word. They are by far the biggest disappointment of the week of the season. Yeah, they're, they're up there. They were, uh, it's gonna be between. It's gonna be between uh, from, from from a regular season standpoint. It's and be really, between... you said you watched that game, so yeah. you can you can you can absolutely attest to this. They got dominated. Yes, no, it wasn't close. No, 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 no. It's not even 26 to 3. Yeah, one bad. Was a fluky. No, no, no. No, that was a straight ass. Matt and couldn't like no. No. They got dominant. That was a ass one. It wasn't no there. It wasn't no uh block punt for a touchdown. No, a miss field goal. No, they they got they got annihilated in that game. Pushed around. Yeah. They looked they looked like they were the two or fourteen team. Every lap. 
Can't but, do it. Yeah, that's a rough one. That's a that's one you don't. Yeah, that's one you don't live down. Nah, nah. Yeah, you don't live that one. If I'm like that happens to the bill, like I'm not watching the play. I can't watch any more football. I'm done. <laughs> no, no. You no. see me come back? Maybe like by the time preseason, that's when I will start. No, mm -mm. nah. No. About the draft. <laughs> to be honest with you, you're not pulling me out of that spiral. Yeah, no. Um, Brandon Staley. Um, so Chargers, of course, do you know do Chargers shit? Um, that, that game was a classic Charger game. It was so classic Charger. Like you knew the Raiders were never going to run away from them. And you knew once the, even the, even when the Chargers got down by like 15 that they were gonna you know they were gonna come back and make it close or even tied. You just I just felt it that, that like, this I like this game is going to be somehow it's going to be close even with even with them falling behind. And they get to overtime, and you know um, Raiders go down, kick the field goal. Chargers Herbert, who you know was just off the charts great. Goes down there, gets you know, get drives them, get they get a field goal, and then the Raiders get the ball back, and you have two minutes left. Um, thirty, I'll even go to thirty-eight seconds left. Thirty-eight seconds left is third and four, and Brandon Staley calls a timeout um, after the Raiders had picked up seven yards. After it was a second and eleven, they picked up seven yards to go third and four. They call the timeout. They're at the uh, 39 yard line of the uh, Chargers. And then they run for 10 yards for a first down and get them well within range of the field goal kicker, who's, you know, quietly been one of the best kickers in the league this year, has made a number of money kicks. And made, I think he made six game winners this year. Um, and there you go. Now, I know a lot of people were speculating and we were wondering, well, were the Raiders playing for the tie and so on and so on? I don't think they were playing for a tie. That um, that's an insane argument, so you'll know why plays for a tie. Oh, you do, yeah, I don't yeah, I don't that's think an, they were playing for the tie. I, I, don't, don't even don't even there's yeah, no no, there's no, no, no I, I don't think I don't think that's the Raiders were playing for the tie. Even ever. even first of all, I mean the, even time. even if they wouldn't have picked up no yardage on say third and four, I still think they would have attempted a 54, 55 yard field goal. Field goal. That that's indoors. That kicker has been big time all year, so I think they would have did everything from that standpoint um, to win the game. Trying to win the game. Here's the Brandon Staley. Here's here's why you have a major problem, with Brandon Staley. Him calling the timeout 38 seconds is nowhere even close to the worst thing he even did in that game. The worst thing he did in that game was go for it down 17-14 on his own 18 fucking yard line. And give away three points in a game that end up they end up losing by three points, or in the game that was tied at the end of regulation. That is the worst thing he did by far. It's not even close by far. And I'm looking at this dude, and then by the way, his excuse in terms of the 38 seconds, he was like, "Well, um, we had to get the right defensive grouping in, and we didn't have the right personnel in in terms of our grouping the position, positions for defense." Bruh, you're supposed to be the defensive guy, number one. And number two, they end up running for 10 yards anyway. So what clearly that grouping, how do you justify not having having the right personnel on the field and then getting ran for ran off for 10 yards? You know how hard it is to run for 10 yards on a third down when you have to get a stop? <laughs> like that's the team. Like, what? They were they were not even running for a first down. They were just running to get closer to, for uh, a, a closer shot at the field goal, uh, uh, get closer for the field goal attempt. They were like, "Oh damn, we gonna we gonna run for ten yards? Wow, okay, we'll take it." So you can't overall big picture. You can't win with this dude. You, there's no way they might make the playoffs every so often because Herbert is just that that dude. Like he, Herbert is the, is a monster. We and we both know this, but no, I've seen. I, his game management, his ego, his, like he he coaches as if he is like um, trying to outsmart the game of football. And I'm sorry, you just not that guys like that get fired quickly, and guys like that just don't make it. It's, it kind of reminds me a bit, a little bit, without the success, without even close near nowhere near close to success, because at least this guy has been in the playoffs and almost got to NBA finals. 
of Daryl Morey with the analytics and you're telling me we don't have to play defense and you're telling me that we don't have to take two, that two point shots don't mean anything no more. And you're telling me that one guy can dominate the basketball and that's going to equate to, that's going to win a championship and I can win big with the playoffs. No, no, no. Rebounding still matters. Defense still matters. Ball movement, energy still matters. Yeah, you can't, Stop trying to. I, I like these motherfuckers that try to outsmart the fucking game. Like Chip Kelly did it years ago in the NFL and look in look, look stupid. Like no, like it, you have talent on that team. You have a generational quarterback. Like let's keep it keep the shit simple. And again, you can't be you can't suck at what you're supposed to be great at, good at, and that's defense. And that defense was horrible this year. And teams ran all of. That wasn't. I mean, I should. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because teams ran and through the, the charges all year long. So he, like, yeah, he's definitely, definitely one of the big disappointments of, of the week. Um, again, long, big, big picture, you cannot win with that guy. What are your thoughts on Staley? You made all the points on Staley. So I'm going to actually use this opportunity to admit that I was absolutely wrong. Um, About the game? Let me finish. Okay. Herbert okay. is amazing. Right. I so so here's what I say. He's the key to unlocking everything. You match him with the coach, the perfect coach for him, and you unlock the, everything in that team. Like you unlock everything. So I do not care about Staley because that's not the one that's going to unlock. Um, Herbert. Herbert's no. the key. Herbert is the key. I could. I haven't been that impressed with a quarter. Uh, I'll say like a young quarterback performance. Since um, I was gonna say, I'm trying to scan my brain if I think of the, the, Andrew Luck ones um, when all that was going on. So I'm going like nothing's popping popping in my head. So no, the playoff one was pretty good with him. Um, but I, I'll I'll say I'll, I'll stop just because it's just not immediately coming. My I I'll, I won't disrespect Andrew Luck like that and go past him. I'm sure there was something there, but I personally. I haven't been as, this impressed with a quarterback I've seen just throw that ball since, honestly, Brett Favre. But I'll give Peyton Manning just because he was so damn impressive when he came into the league. Um, but uh, but just that was an unbelievable performance. It was an unbelievable performance. Um, young John Elway, honestly, what it looked like. Um, uh, yeah, good, yeah, and so... One. And so, uh, and so I, I concur with all your statements. It just doesn't matter to me because I know Brandon Staley's not the one that's going to unlock Herbert, and Herbert is the key to unlocking that entire franchise. And it's so it's too obvious to ignore. He's great. He's oh my god, oh my god, he's great. And I needed to shut up and admit I was wrong. He absolutely deserves being a Pro Bowl. He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, he he elevated, he elevated himself. Even into what I was thinking about him. No, that that was. And I said it. I said he was that dude, even though I was caking for my boy Josh Allen. But right. I said he I, before that. I said Herbert was that dude, and he elevated even over that. Um, him and Burrow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, they. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He, he made he made plays. I mean, they go. They had. Oh, six, they can oh, go six fourth down. Really? The they were crushed. They were trying to crush Emmy, and he was fearless with that ball. Yeah, I'm telling you in a way I haven't seen since far. Just fearless with that yeah. ball. It was that. That was that. He put on the show. No, so it, no. It, it, if you love, if you if you somehow we, we both love quarterbacking, of course, and we both are fascinated by quarterbacking. If you like, you're just a fan of just great quarterbacking. You, oh my god! Yeah, like that was. That was like that was Christmas. It was, it was like, yeah, like because he, like I said, he made every uh -huh. throw imaginable and made throws that, I mean, Car they, a fantastic they, quarterback, and he threw circles around. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. circles. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's it's levels. It's that like no. It, yeah, no. there are very few quarterbacks on this planet that you can honestly in the history of the NFL that you can just say. We got nothing. Win it, please. Try. Because to your point about Staley, the rest of the team had nothing. Like no. nothing. No. 
Um, and that was, look, if Herbert doesn't put on that performance, they are, they get decimated. Oh, they would have got ran off the field. They, I mean, they, yeah, no. So, they, 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 I, they, I, I, like, like, I think that is as much proof as to what you're saying as anything that Herbert had to be amazing just for them to barely lose. Yeah. So that 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 to me states it all. Staley cannot unlock Herbert. Herbert's the king. No. no. Can unlock Herbert, period. I mean, Herbert, Herbert just like I said, he has been great in spite of Staley these first two years. He's the guy. Like, he's gotten off to a historic start for uh, any quarterback in the history of sport. Like normally these guys, I don't care who it is, that year one, year two, they struggle. Like Marino was the aberration for year two. But year one is like his year one was historic. Like he had a, a historic year one. Um, so no, he he's a a serious problem. And he like, like I said, whoever when he gets unlocked, and court, it won't be by this coach, but when he gets completely unlocked, look out. Like like imagine matching like a Herbert with like a Shanahan. Oh my goodness! Come on now! Yeah. Come yeah, on I mean, now! Yeah. He like yeah. that. Like the like the like. The, like what that could be? Oh, what, so, what about like a, a Sean like, Payton? It's just like it's just like yeah, like Brandon State. Like who who is no no? We're not doing this. Bye, Brandon State. <laughs> we need somebody that gives you that type of feeling. Like oh man, him and Herbert, oh, they're gonna set this league on fire. That's what you need. And uh, coming up in third, but I, he could have been. He could have been second, easily second. Uh, Mr. Joe Judge, of course. Like so, last week you didn't get you. You what we did last week, and it was oh my god, too. I hadn't really engulfed myself in New York sports in 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 a long time. Um, being down here in the DMV, and you know, I, I grew up on New York sports with the fan, and used to just crack up at you know the Jets and Giant fans on after, especially after the bad losses. So. It kind of took me back to memory lane to just hear <laughs> New York Giants fans and media people just go, just destroy this dude, and rightfully so. After that, just absurd and just strange 11-minute press conference that is, I mean, it was harder to, it, it was very, I love, I mean, like, if you want to watch a train wreck, that was that was that 11 minutes was a complete train wreck which probably i want to say not probably without question he's one of the first people to one of the first coaches i can remember to talk himself out of a job like i think the the giants are so toxic that i actually think even before that press conference even if they would have lost even them losing the last six games of the season double digits all that four and 13 i actually think they would have brought him back but that after that press conference it, it was like nah there's no God. way this guy there's no way we did like yeah like no we can't it, it, it just no can't bring it can't do it i, that. Yeah, I mean it, and then you know to follow it up um lose to washington or whatever um they do uh he runs back-to-back -back quarterback sneaks on third and nine um and then had another, you know, followed up again with another press conference, not about, not as absurd, but had no regrets on what he said the previous week. That would basically double down on, double down on it. Um, yeah, this is it's. It, it was very again. I've it's, it, I can't remember. I'm really trying to rack my brain to remember a last time a coach talked his way out of a job. It. it I, I'm sure it's happened. I know it's happened in terms of football. I'm sure. I'm sure we've got enough incompetent just coaches just say some dumb shit or do something to say something. But I really believe that he talked himself out of that job. The Giants are an organization that have completely lost their way. They've just completely yeah. So just give you some give you some context on 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 what. And it's been that way for a while. Now. Yeah, no, it's, it has been that way. Um, they have the worst record in football over the past five years. Uh, even going past, going going back to Coughlin's last couple of years, 
So I can go back a decade, last 10 years, they have like the fourth worst, worst record. They have- The inflection, um, they sat Eli down and then started him, like sat him down for the record and then st- st- like this. That, yeah, that yeah was, even, that, even how, you know, handling that was, that was that that Odell was Beckham, the, that, that whole deal. Um, they have gone through now in six years, three coaches. So Broke. it's been it's two years fired, fire. two years yep. fired, two years fired. Yep. And that's fire. Been there. Been there. Yeah. Oh, yep. We all been there. We all mm-hmm. been there. And and I was going I, I was going I wanted to talk about this uh from a standpoint of I really especially with the Brian Flores with transpired with um with Brian Flores and that whole ordeal, I started racking my brain on just how, what should be the approach for organization in terms of how you construct your organization. Um, first of all, yeah, we can transition from Judge. We, we heard, we've done enough on him. Um, he, I, he never should coach. He never should be a head coach in, in football ever again, um, in head, a head coach in NFL ever again. Um, I'm just gonna say that he's he's one of those guys that's just yeah he's just not a head coach maybe coordinator somewhere cool but he's not a head coach and he just the temperament and that that whole the the rah rah age of coaching is dead in sports period it's just like that that you know you're not trying to win the press conference and this big bad tough and no no that that shit is just not that's you gotta have some X's and O's and you gotta, you gotta have a fucking, you gotta have some type of plan of action. Um, don't, don't tell me what you're going to do. Don't tell me what you did. Yeah, no, that big bad wolf, that shit is done in sports. In period, it's just not, it's not what's going on in 2022. Um, so I want to get back to the the Flores firing, and you know, I really read a lot of stuff on this, and one of this was just curious on terms of how this went down. Um. And again, it sounds like from the reports I read, I'm sure you've heard some, some similar things that, I mean, we know Flores never liked uh, Tiger, Tiger Belova. Like he never was a, a Tiger Belova guy, um, even how he handled him last year. And I, I, to be honest with you, after watching Tua this year, I, Flores is Flores more. It's probably right. Like this guy is I'm not saying he's going to be a bad quarterback, but he's not a game changing quarterback. And Flores had a front row view to. What a franchise green chain quarterback looked like for the better part of the time. Of course, he was in New England. Um, so it sounds like he, of course, the general manager and the owner were never were, were never connected like that. And the owner and the general manager both liked Tua Flores. There are reports that he wanted Herbert. And, you know, general manager and of course overruled him and and, and took and took Tua. So Flores will be fine. He might end up with one of these coaching uh, vacancies that, you know, uh, that, that, are, that are up for grass. I would, would not be surprised. And he, I mean, he, he doesn't even have to take a job this year. He can wait because um, he, you know, he's well-respected in the, in the league. Here's what I'll say. Like, I think in the NFL, like, we, I'm looking at how to construct a franchise and how I would go by constructing a franchise. To me, a ideal purpose situation would be I'm an owner. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a, a great president, football guy, let him hire a general manager, and then the general manager go hire a coach. Now, I know that that model is not really used so much into 2022. It's just basically owner, general manager, and coach. So cool. We can use that model, but the one thing one thing that has to be, if I'm the owner of a team, the one thing that has to happen is we got to be, the general manager and the coach have to be on the same page in terms of the quarterback, period. They can't, we, it can't be a situation where the general manager likes this quarterback, but the coach likes that quarterback or vice versa. Like that, that just can't happen. I can't have, it. like, I, you're not going to, it, you're not going to win. It's, it's like starting off on, it, you might as well just give it up. Like you're not, it's not going to happen. We, they have to be on the same page 
as the as, as in terms of who should quarterback this team. So I think that, and I've seen situations where you have a general manager, a coach, and an owner who don't even agree on the quarterback. I mean, I go back to you know our toxic situation back in 2012, where you had Mike Shanahan, who supposedly had all the power, but didn't have didn't have enough power to not draft RG3 and trade all those picks, which Daniel Snyder ended up doing. And Snyder and Shanahan didn't want to do, and we of course see how that turned out. So I need if I'm, I'm hiring a coach. I, and first of all, I think the coach, the coach and general manager have to be there. You you guys are one. Let's go. So I'm not doing this. Fire the coach, keep the general manager, or vice versa. Like no, y'all are connected. So if y'all fuck this up, y'all both are gone. Period. If y'all fuck up this quarterback situation, bye, both of y'all, and then I'll start start fresh. So I don't I don't know we've gotten to this place in sports, especially in the NBA and NFL, where the coach pays for the mistakes of the GM. And then the GM <laughs> keeps his job. And the coach, the coach, the coach, and basically the coach is like, look, I didn't want this guy. You, this is your guy. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I so I know the situation back to sports. Um, so uh so here is this was this was actually fairly simple, real. Um one is uh, the Miami organization fell in love with Tua after the national championship game. They had him targeted and number one on their draft board. Right. That he was going to be drafted. So that's it. Flores fell in love with Deshaun Watkins. Deshaun Watkins, all that stuff came out. That fell through. He took the fall for this. It's kind of that simple on this one. What yeah, you're I talking mean, about. I read those, those reports. I mean, there, there are a number of reports. That I mean, he didn't think. That simple. He didn't think like, uh, yeah, all the different things. The more damning thing for me on Flores, I'm not high on Flores at all. So I get the respect. But the reason why is, the reason why um, I'm I'm lower on Flores, uh, the more damning thing, this is how I should say, for him was how he handled the defense this year. The reason why they were so putrid at the beginning of the season was because their defensive philosophy did not mix it up enough in modern day NFL structures. I've said this about the Dolphins in that defense before. Um, so that, so again, going back to the line that you quoted, you can't suck at the thing you're supposed to be great at um, when you come when you come as a, as a head coach. Um, what you described is what we see all the time. You expertly rolled it out with with the Washington Football Team. Um, the the heads of your organization. The NFL is too competitive for the heads of your organization, however you define that. The, nobody will ever have more power than the owner. That's not a thing. The owner has all power, period, in the story. The great owners hire great football people and let them do their job. And then um, how you structure that is what the owner's responsibility is. And if you deem the structure, the best structure that you have to be um, the general manager and the coach linked together to bring a young quarterback on, perfect. But here's the linchpin of this. You have to have an owner who understands that hiring good football people is the best move and to really be able to pinpoint the good football people who are going to bring in the right players. The flip in this is as a, as a collective group, you cannot believe that you're going to mess this quarterback situation up. You can't. Because once you start, that mindset is the wrap already. No, and no question. No. It, is being, it is being unequivocally on the same page. Not all the time, but you have to get on the same page on, the big, on those big decisions. Here's, case here's, yeah, case no. of point, Patriots were not on page with Tom Brady, but it happened. And so you move on. You let your football people identify the correct person for them, and then you let them go with it. Yeah, yeah. That is what this organization is failing to do. These owners just can't get out of their own way from a standpoint of not only identifying the football people, but trusting trusting them to make those decisions without interference. Um, We're doing some little research um early on just wondering in terms of about general managers and football people and i think we've gotten to a place where we just don't 
as in comparison to when we grew up, we talk about the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s, you look at how many quality GMs and football people there were then, um, it just, it's not even a comparison. I mean, you're talking about, we grew up with like George Young's, the Ernie Accorsi's, Bill Polian's. We had two of them, Castor Lee and, and uh, Bobby Beathard, you know, Jim Fink's, uh, Carmen Policy. Um, it was a, just seem, it seemed like it was just a number of top football people that were entrusted and they, you know, with that, and then, and the own again, to your point, the owners let them cook. And it seems like they, a shift started with the whole Jimmy Johnson, Jerry Jones thing to where I think Jerry Jones was the first owner that I remember in the NFL that really interfered. Al Davis. Al Davis, yes, yes. But you know what? Al Davis was a great football guy though he proved to be he interfered but he proved to be a, a great evaluator he was al davis was a one-on-one -on -one, basically i mean al davis was like red r back like and you know paul brown like he just knew he knew talent he was a he's a one he's a one-off he like al davis you can say what you want about al davis al davis is one of the great talent evaluators in the nfl history period he knew his shit and he knew he knew how and he drafted like he was ahead of his time period that's, yeah, he was so. Uh, yes, he was the he was the first from that standpoint. But I think that they, with I think there was a shift with with Jerry Jones, um, in terms of that inter in terms of that interfering owner, and we have not. And it got it really has gotten worse. It got really bad in the early the, the mid two thousands to where now, it's like the owner you have a number and you have a number of owners who want to be kind of want to be in the forefront and kind of want to are are so you know hell bent on receiving so on getting the credit name your frustration you talk about snyder you you can say his name yeah no that okay yeah, he's the pole yeah no he's you can yeah, say his name. yeah no daniel snyder yeah no you live this life so you just might as well speak from experience yeah you no. live yeah, you know, I've lived through I've lived through twenty seven years of this shit. Yeah, no, we're not questioning. Say his name and just go in. Yeah, no, he no absolutely is. Like, these owners you talking about? Yeah, no, he yeah he would be at the top of the list in terms yeah. of that. There's no there's no two ways about it. But even as bad as he is, and he's horrible. I mean, I can definitely get in conversation of worst owner in 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 one of the worst owners in all professional sports, not alone, let alone uh, the NFL. But I see, you know. You know, I see um, a lot of these owners who just in who just don't trust don't trust their own football people, or they're incompetent themselves, or they're incompetent. Yes, in terms of run, they're all successful businessmen in terms of running a football organization. Right, right. Because again, if, again, if I'm an owner, I want get me the best football people possible i want those people i want the best football people i want the best football person running my organization and if that guy doesn't do the job then i'll fire him that's fine i mean i don't i don't have a problem with the owner you you own the team you can do what you want so i like yeah you got all, you write the checks you have if you see empty seats and stuff and that that type of shit will will get you fired but um but to me get football people <laughs> like, that's the thing get go out there and get real football people and listen to them and like even going back to jerry jones cowboy the reason why cowboys have had talent have had a lot have have had this run of, of, of excellent talent recently with drafts is he start he beat like four or five years ago started to actually listen to some of his football people stephen jones and his, his scouts and and, and, dra and people that you know kept him from fucking drafting johnny menzel versus uh drafting uh zach martin that was a written that was going to happen, by the way. Yeah, only you know that is what it is, and it seems like it's only seems like it's only uh, going to get worse. So we have uh, the playoffs are finally here. After uh, eighteen weeks, um, you're going to have the you know the NFL just shoved this shit down your throat. The biggest playoff weekend ever, <laughs> uh, Saturday through Monday. Um, don't know how I feel about the Monday playoff game. I gotta, that's a little, that's kind of, of course you're going to watch, but it's 
I feel like the playoffs should end on a Sunday. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm sure I'll change my mind when it, when it happens. But yeah, it's gonna feel gonna feel a little strange. Gonna feel a little strange on Monday football. A Monday we'll playoff. Mon- we we'll playoff football. I'm good. Spread yeah. over more time. I'm good. <laughs> Not something I'm gonna complain about. Um, look through. You look at these games. Um, at least four of them should be highly contested games, highly contested games. We agree, I think we would agree that Pittsburgh, Kansas City, and Philadelphia, Tampa Bay are clear mismatches. I mean, yes and no. Again, it's the playoffs. It is the playoffs. Uh, I think particularly um, – I think the Pittsburgh Kansas City one could be interesting. Oh, wow. See, I'm glad you say that. I'm glad you say that because I I feel like that game is going to be much closer than people think it is. Like I really, I really, I, yeah, I think that could be. I think that could be interesting. I don't think they can beat Kansas City. I don't think they would. They, I don't think they can do a beat them. But I I think they can keep that close. Yeah. I really do. Yep. 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 I mean, like I have a hard time envisioning how Philadelphia is going to be successful against Tampa Bay. It's very challenging for me to, to figure that out. There's a way, and that's why the coaches get paid what they get paid, but it, I, it's challenging for me to figure out. So if I can't even figure out a way they can run their stuff, I, it's, win is not what I'm thinking, and a runaway victory by Tampa Bay does not seem unlikely. So that it would it would be stunning if that game was competitive. Or stunning is probably a little bit too harsh. It would be surprising if that game is competitive. It'd yeah, that, that has 31, 17, 34, 14 written all over it. It'd be surprising. That one I'm not, I'm not really that out of all the games, that's the one I'm looking least, I'm not, don't really have um not really excited about, to be honest with you. That's the, if you if I were ranking the games, I probably would put that number uh, number six. If I were if I were ranking the games as far as my interest level and as far as our in terms of competitive level, uh, what are your thoughts on the rubber match of your division? Rock, pure analogy, rock fight. It's going to be sub zero temperatures. Yeah, I heard the weather is crazy. Going to be crazy. It is by from straight from all the people like you know like I'm listening to everybody in Buffalo. Um, is they saying by the end of the game, minus, definitely minus, I think I heard 20, but I don't even want to go that deep, but in the minus. So um, see, you're talking about single digit, you're talking about minus, and then windshield factors in there. So it's going to be a frigid game. Yeah. Um, rock, rock fight. Do everything to win. Um, this could not be more 50-50. If I was, if I was, if I was doing the eyes on this, I would have Buffalo by two. And so that's essentially a pick up. Two and yeah. a half. Uh, um, hmm. Without thinking about money, eyes, and all, I don't know. Any, I can't, I can't get that deep into it. Just in terms of just like my confidence level and thinking about the evenness of these two teams and the history and division rivalry three times in a year all that stuff um the 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 wide swings of just the play styles of each of the games um have been very unique so uh yeah buffalo home two and a half man i, I really have had a hard maybe it's only wednesday so i, I got some time here um but in terms of when the game that one has 14, 17 written all over it. I'm not I, saying a word right now. That one has 17 written all over it. Yeah, I don't have I, – I think, I, yes, I, I, I'll i be surprised if it wasn't a close game. I'll put, I'll put it that way. But I'm just trying to – don't have a great feel of that game. I don't. There's no way I'll have a fantastic game this game. Oh, there's no way this game isn't close. No, it'll be close. I mean, yeah, it'll be close. No, it, it's, no yeah, There's, it'll be. It's gonna be close. No, it'll be close. I know. I know people are down on on Louisville right now. And Matt Jones, 
in terms of how he performed at the end of the season. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but I I just can't see this game not being close. Familiarity, weather, uh, styles of play. Um, yeah, no, I, I think this is a, like it's, I, it's a hot fight. You just throw all that. Right. Throw, yeah, no, so it's gonna be throw yeah. all of that out. Yeah, throw all of that. That's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling your audience. Throw all the all everything the national media is saying. Don't listen to it. It's incorrect. Belichick mm. literally said we're starting from scratch yep. on the game. They are going to throw something completely different than what we've seen. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, that's Belichick. Yeah. That's, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope, nope, nope. Don't do that. This is different. This is different. This is when a division title has been taken away from him. This is his pride, his ego. Oh, yeah, oh, no, he's coming with, yeah, no, he, yeah. He's yeah. trying to stomp out a division rival. He never coached better than when he coached against Peyton Manning because he knew Peyton Manning was his direct competition for getting to the goal of the Super Bowl championships that he wanted to. Um, Allen Bills in his way. Yeah. He has to, he has to come up with competent game plans against Allen. He has Belichick's full undivided attention right now. Guaranteed we see things that haven't been seen before. And I only say that to say, yeah, that is Belichick, but that's why no one on the national media is going to be saying those things. That's why I say don't listen to anything they're saying because they don't know what's going on in this game. What are your thoughts on how your team finished off, finished the season? I'm fine with it. We we got we we got the division and the playoffs. Um, I think I'll say what Buffalo. So like I said, like I have this game, like I understand this game completely. If I don't understand any of anything, I understand this game completely. Here's what here's what no one will say. A Buffalo fan will say, um, on on record, and I've listened to them all. Um, they've annoyed me on this point. Um, the reason I was taking up for Josh Allen over Herbert at that point in time, what which was three weeks ago, um, was because um, at that point in time, I felt like they were even and Josh Allen was, was showing more in terms of the progression of the team. What I witnessed after that, there is no comparison between those two. Herbert leaped light years ahead of Josh Allen. The way that Allen is playing right now will get us an L against the Patriots, without a doubt. But what I do like is the focus that our team has when going, going against the Patriots. We know zero mistakes. And they really, really focus hard on not making any other mistakes. I wish they would focus that hard in some of the other games, but they really focus that hard against the Patriots, which is why I keep saying this makes this game unique. How about then? This is even whoever wins this game, it doesn't matter because it will mean nothing. It will tell us nothing about that team going against the next team they face in the playoffs. Because the, the individual components of what makes the Bills and the Patriots go right now at this point in time um, are still about filling each other out and coming up with things, the weaknesses and the tells that they know. And so the game plans and the flow of the game are just gonna vacillate so wildly that is unpredictable. And here's the thing that the, the, this is where I was getting to that Buffalo fans won't tell you about. This team does not play good in, in bad weather, which is a problem because your your team is from Buffalo. But that, 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 that's so up in bad weather. And so the weather, even though we're at home, which is why I could only put it at a two or two and a half max, even though we're at home, the weather hurts us. Yeah. If you we were playing in a dome against the Patriots. Oh, oh, my spread is six and a half, seven, and come and get us. Yeah, yeah. But that weather, we're not good at. We're not yeah, good. It, at. It, it negates your talent. Uh, it negates your advantage in terms of talent. You have better talent. It does. It does. So, so that's why there, there's just no way this game is in call. Because exactly what you're talking about. We have more talent. The talent yes. gap is wider, but because of Belichick and the familiarity that he has and how great he is, um, that, is that plays a huge factor. And 
the way in which we vacillate so wildly depending upon the environment that we're playing in is also a factor. And then, and especially the meaning the environment that we play in at home is actually the opposite of when we play at our maximum makes things really tricky. And that's what's shown up this year more than anything else. That's why we've been so damn helter skelter. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking oh, forward to it. Just it's to gonna be rock right. What it's gonna Belichick, be rock what Belichick it's comes gonna be up right. Um, before we get to the main the main course here, court with Dallas, San Francisco, what are what are some thoughts on Vegas, Cincinnati, Arizona, uh, yeah. Los Angeles? Yeah, Arizona, Los Angeles game game will fascinate me. We have been so, or at least me personally, have been so up and down these teams throughout the year, so right. very up and so very down on them. So I I am fascinated by how this game is going to go. Early in the season, I absolutely expected Arizona to win this game. Yeah. And now I absolutely expect the Los Angeles Rams to win this game. But can I say either one of those defensively? I absolutely cannot. No. no. Um, I was listening to uh, um, uh, not first take, um, around the horn. Not around the horn. Um, pardon the interruption. Oh, pardon. Okay. And Cornell just said something that I like. He said, uh, Stafford will bring you back from the mistakes that he makes. Yeah, I mean, keeps you in the game, and he takes and he takes the game know, away. Yeah, it, oh, that's, it, I mean that's why I mean it's on Stafford. I stated these pretty much from day yeah, one. Yeah, no, you've been we. Been 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 yeah. So disjointed. They've looked so disjointed. I can't put any confidence in them. I really can't. I'm gonna, I, I, mean, I, really I, I, think, I think this game will be this game will be another close game, but I, I, I'm gonna go, I have to go with Arizona. I, I lean towards Arizona. I have to. I, 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 I'm actually I'm leaning towards the Rams. I have to lean towards Arizona. I I'm leaning towards the Rams. I just trust the court. I just trust their quarterback, even though it's his first playoff start. It's not like Stafford has got a million playoff starts to be honest. With you. But I just trust I Kyler Murray. Stafford is going to do something that throws. And like Kyler Murray, I don't trust their offense. Yeah, I, I mean, I, their offense is not no, it's it's not great. I mean, they they keep struggle to run the ball, but I just don't. Stafford just I, how I he ended the season. It was yeah, it was, just, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. Off, Arizona's offense though. What has their offense shown you? They've been bad. Yeah, I mean, so I get it. I agree with you, but their offense equals as bad as Stafford is. Their offense is bad. So I would love to be like that. Like I have, kind of, I just don't. And they're no, we don't know. That's what I mean. Again, that's, like that. before, that's what makes this this this, this matchup fascinating. We don't trust either one of these teams <laughs> as a whole. We don't trust either one of these teams uh, as a whole. Uh, but I, I just the Rams, man, they just. Uh. I here's what I would love to see. I would love to see Aaron Donald and Von Miller go off. I, I I am I'm which if, is possible if, 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 yeah. outside of my team. What is a rooting interest in this entire playoffs? Um, I would it would as long as it's not the Bills, I would be very excited to see Aaron Donald win a championship. I would, I would. So even though I don't believe in Stafford, my hope is that Aaron Donald and Von Miller and the rest of those boys come to play. Because I think Arizona could be had offensively for the offense versus that defense. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting um, from that standpoint, um, to, especially, I mean, with the, with the two quarterbacks, uh, Kyler Murray's first start, first career playoff start. Um, I mean, is Hopkins, you know, what's, what's going to be his status? Um, Hobbled. Yeah, at best, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, man, I, yeah, staff, I just can't get Stafford. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, you can, I mean, it's, this is a coin flip game. Yeah, Arizona you know. offense is bad. No, it's bad. No, it's bad. No, it's no, no, there, there's no getting around. No, the offense is bad. Um, the offense is bad, but man, like, boy, Stafford, yeah, Stafford, yeah. like you said, he can, he can, he can, he can, 
It's bad. I can't like. I, yeah, I know Stafford. But the mistake, yeah, no. But, but here's here's the thing. It is bad, but it is bad. But Colin Murray doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Like doesn't make Stafford like mistakes. No, but that offense can't score points now. So that's a big deal against that defense. Remember, their offense isn't going against the Rams' offense. They're no. going against the Rams' defense, which are monsters, scary monsters. Um, but this, I'm saying this game is going to be close. Yeah, no. I think, Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, yeah. No, it's a, can it's I get on the pick six? Absolutely, I can. Absolutely. It's a coin flip. And I huh. see Aaron Donald wrecking Arizona's yes. entire game uh, plan. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, so, yeah, yeah, without oh, question. Can I see Kyler Murray being a, the monster he was in the beginning? Yeah, absolutely, I can. Um, what I can't see is those receivers. I I just I don't see how they move the ball consistent. I can't see it right now. But McVay, Mc, oh no, McVay's on rant. See, um, yeah, I'm leaning towards. I'm leaning towards rant. Um, San Francisco, Dallas. Of course, this is a throwback. Dallas will roll over San Francisco. Oh, stop it. No, you, yeah, you have lost no, your I, mind. I was hating. I actually resent oh, you making me defend Dallas so much. You, but you, you're so really, you're, no, it's not. Real juggernaut it's, right now. They're not, rolling. No, 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 they're not. Stop, stop. You, okay. you, they, this is where, no, this is where, no, you've leaned into the Dallas. You have leaned into the Dallas. I didn't, I didn't see your Dallas. It's insane. It's, 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 no, it's, no, it's bad. First of all, it, no, here's the thing. First of all, okay. so now we talk a reason, no, 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 there's no, no. You, I mean, you can believe we go, Jimmy you know, G? No. You gonna believe in Jimmy G? No, no, you gonna believe in Dak? What is Dak? What is Dak? How many playoff wins does he got? Jimmy G um, went to the Super Bowl. Has Jimmy G not to have been to the Super Bowl? What is that? Has Jimmy G not been to the Super Bowl? Jimmy G has a winning record. Jimmy G, Jimmy G has wins. What are you, what are you talking about? Jimmy G, won, got, Jimmy G has a great record. What are you, what are you, his win loss record is great. What are you talking about? He hasn't been durable. Okay, yeah, he's one game. He's Jimmy G is a winning quarterback. What are we talking about? Okay, all right, bro. That's why they drafted the dude to replace him. Well, that was that's just dumb. That's I mean, it's not his fault. They they just win. That's just dumb. They don't know. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. We know Trey, Trey Lance, please. Trey Lance. Real, who's going to win this game? I think San Francisco is going to win this game. San Francisco. I, yeah, I, I, why I, they going to win this game, Real? Huh? Why? Why are they going to win this game? So, from a matchup standpoint, here yep. we know. Yep. Dallas has a pass rush. How do you neutralize a pass rush? A physical running game. I've uh, watched teams. I've watched teams push Dallas around. Who? Who okay, is? I've watched who, teams. Kansas City physically pushed Dallas, Dallas around. Physically, they pushed Dallas back? around. They're gonna get these this dominant. They can run game. on San Francisco can run on anybody. Who are they running? Run? Who are these people that are running? Who? Who are they? They can they, run on you. Sure. Okay. Keep going. Keep San Francisco going. can run on anybody. I just need you. I need you. To I mean, here, here, here's the thing. This is a reason why. This is a reason why this is a this is there's a reason why Dallas is only a three point you, favorite in this you game. Are, you, there's a reason why it's a three point favorite. Dallas. Wow, I mean, you talking about Dallas is rolling. They're, who are they oh, beating? Who are you? You talking about rolling over Washington? <laughs> rolling over a Philadelphia team that had that didn't even play as quarterback with sixteen starters out? What are we talking about here? Okay. Dallas right. has Dallas. If you really look at Dallas, who is Dallas beating? They've beaten up on bad teams. Uh -huh. They uh -huh. beat up on a bunch of bad teams who are non playoff teams who are yeah. bad. What's yeah, Dallas? The Atlanta's of the world. What's San Francisco's record? But did they not sweep the Rams? Were the, the, the Rams not in the playoffs? Record, did they not sweep the Rams? Record. Okay, they have to, if, records, are, records don't mean anything right now. It's even, even. Who has a better quarterback? Uh, it's not by much. Have who you watched that? Have you, hold on, hold on. Have you watched that? Have you watched that the last month of the who season? Has better, who has better running backs? Who, come on now, real. Who has I mean, better? You, I, my, you drinking the Dallas Kool Aid is, is a, oh my, 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 they're gonna roll on it. Please. Okay, all right. We trust. We, I mean, goodness. Okay. I, I mean, it's one thing to pick them. You, I can see you picking them to win. Cool, they pick own, whatever. But you, you, Both. I mean, you give way Both. too much respect to Dallas. Team that has no, San no pedigree for winning at all with the squad. At least, at least San Francisco has players that have been to one big games. <laughs> that was won anything. They better hope they can score. They don't get beat by more than ten points. Oh, yeah, pray. Right. Well, give me a score. Give me a score. Thirty-four. Dallas 
21, San Francisco. How about that? I'll give you 27-24. Who? <laughs> San Francisco. They cover, they barely, they piss no, off the better. Yeah, I'll give you 24, 27, 24. Okay. All right. Okay. And, Jimmy, and by the way, Jimmy G, I'll let know. Jimmy G will outplay Dak. Okay. So, I, yes. Yes. Real. Double down. Double down. Dak. All right. Just, you, I, you have not watched Dak in the last team in the last record. month. Record. Dak, has been, Dak has not been good. Against against competent competition, Dak has not been good. Double, double. Eagle, the, the Eagles did not play anybody, no. and they played Washington and the week before. I'm thinking look about at, look at, look at, look at, Have you looked at Dallas's schedule? What Dak has done the last six weeks? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What has Dak done against, against Washington and Philadelphia? That's what that's what you're going to gauge. That's how you're gauging uh, his performances. Their the best offensive game. threat is Debo Samuel. Yes. That's stop true. him. Stop him. Let me see them stop him. They will. They'll Let me see stop them him. stop him. They'll stop him. Okay. All right. Stop. You both say he was not that good. No, like, he's not that good. What are you talking about? You said he's not that good. People saying he was a monster. To be your primary you offensive threat, he's no. not that good. No, Come to on, be your man. primary offensive threat, no. Uh, uh, Need your quarterback to be that good, and Jimmy G's not that good. Stop. I, I just yeah. That I, press I, don't, I don't get the game. ahead of Jimmy G. We're not doing this. Yeah, no, okay. no, he's not. Not not this version of Dak Prescott. Not the Dak Prescott of last month. Not that Dak Prescott. Right, like, you don't get you don't get like I mean you don't the get the be- you don't get the benefit of the doubt when you don't have a pedigree for winning and when you play the way he played the last month of the season. He was nope. he was bad the last month of the season. Jimmy G the last six oh. weeks. But okay, Jimmy G's worse. Whatever Dak Prescott's bad is, Jimmy G worse. Go game by game over these last weeks you're talking about. Exactly. All right. I watched Jimmy G take his team uh-huh. down yeah, against, I, against I, a I, playoff caliber team, come mm-hmm. back from 17 nothing and beat a team in a game they had to win. I watched Jack uh-huh. Prescott throw for a million yards against a game against a team that played nobody. And then Who a week before against a team that played nobody. Who nobody, has, nobody cared about that game. They, except yeah. Dallas, they also cared, but nobody, the Eagles didn't play anybody that game. Did you watch again? Watch Dak Prescott the last five, six weeks of this Better season. Better stats all around, everywhere, by a margin, a significant margin. So. I mean, Dak had no. Listen, Dak had the better, better year. I'm saying no, no, no. no. Back, yeah. We're not. So we're not debating. No, I'm not debating. Dak had a better year than Jimmy G. But in a playoff yeah. game, who who I rather no. have to uh, to win a playoff oh. game? I'm taking Jimmy G. Yes, I'm taking okay. Jimmy G. Who would I rather have to win one playoff game right here, right now? I'm taking Jimmy G. You continue to take those L's. That's exactly what you can do. You you stand on that Jimmy G hill. Go ahead. I mean, Jimmy. G, listen, listen. Bad. No, no. Here's the no. But here's the thing about. I'm not putting. I'm not putting Jimmy G as an all-time great. Jimmy G has been a winning quarterback. Is he durable? No. Is he somebody that? Is he somebody that's going to be a, go down as this Hall of Famer? No, Dak ain't going to the Hall of Fame either. Okay, Uh-oh. so like Uh-oh. let's let's be real about that. And Dak is surrounded yeah. by you know. Yeah. So let, I mean, come on now. About your boy, You're talking crazy. So hey, listen, you again. I watch. I watch Dak the last six weeks. I know. I know what I see. My my two eyes are not lying to me. The way Dak has played the last six weeks against competent competition, it hasn't <laughs> against playoff caliber competition. It hasn't been good. Okay. I don't care about what he did against Washington. I don't care about what he did yeah. against the Eagles. I Let's don't. go next team. Next I don't. Team. Next team. Next. No, team. we. I mean, we agree about that. Cincinnati will take Vegas out. So I, yeah. I think that that's. I think that's that has like. I don't see Vegas. I, that could be a blowout. That I can be honest with you. The you only know, the, thing you have to worry about is Cincinnati's immature. Yeah. Yeah, but that it's not like Vegas. It's not like Vegas has a bunch of. Yeah, that's to. true. It's not, but it's not like Vegas has a bunch of playoff experience because, here. So, yeah. like, talent that. wise. No, that's yeah. I, I think they. Cincinnati's history. ascending. Vegas is either plateaued or descending. Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas getting to the playoffs was like, uh, oh, no, no. that was that, heaven. Like that's yeah. I, like yeah. yeah no, nobody's expecting Vegas to go with no Super Bowl or anything like that. Yeah, getting to playoffs was the victory. Yeah. Questions for Sap uh, or a question for Sap. Are people overreacting to the recent play of Mac Jones? They absolutely are. Yes, they are. So here, here, here's what I'm going to say. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yes, they are. Um, I think we got to go back to like 
expectations and yeah. original. So I don't remember on this podcast, me or you saying that Mac Jones was going to be this next second coming of this, that, and the third. I don't like, I don't say, I don't remember calling him the next Tom Brady. I don't remember saying he's going to be a, he's a generational talent. Oh. Um, you said that you much would have rather, would have rather had Justin Fields and Justin Fields would have terrified you under Bill Belichick. Mac Jones is fine, but he doesn't scare me. I said, I, go ahead. no, I said when Mac Jones, I said when Mac Jones was playing well, I'm very impressed. Very impressed. He's playing within the confines of the offense. Um, uh, he's making the right decisions, so on and so on. So I, I guess just getting back to just the original conversations that we had about Mac Jones, I don't. I see a guy who's still a rookie. Um, yeah. he, he had a rough ending to the season. Yeah. But I just don't, I never put him on that level to where I say, to where like he was in MVP conversations or whether he was going to be, again, this, this, uh, and I still think he has potential to be a franchise quarterback, by the way. Um, I'll say that. I mean, he has, he, he still has a lot of talent. But I guess, you know, I, stuff I've been hearing after these games and the reaction has been like, like he don't belong in the league or something. Like, what what were the expectations? Like, what are we talking about here? He still had a very good year. He's going to finish running up and offensive player of, of the rookie of the year, which is fine. Jamar Chase is going to win that, but cool. Jamar Chase is a, is a beast, um, to say the least. But, I, I mean, I... Like if you if you're a New England fan, I think you like if you have him quarterback in your team, I think you ought to be fine with that. To be honest with you, um, in terms of his, I mean, you if you're gauging his performance for the season as a whole, I I think he you have to be. I don't what I don't think really you really can complain about it. It's it's an A, it's an A. Um, he's a rookie quarterback in the playoffs. Yes. That's the bottom line. That's that's all you. That's all you. That sentence right there. That's all you need to know. Go look at that in the history of the NFL. This how many rookie? How many rookie quarterbacks have been in the playoffs? It's a very no. short list. Yes. This is this is first year. First year. Yes. I second, third, second first. Smiling because he's ahead of schedule. Yes. They should not be this good at this point in time. This is a. If Frable hadn't done what he did this year, I would be. Just and you know, I mean, for me to be saying this, you know, but I would be, I would be, um, ringing the bell for Belichick. This has been an amazing coaching job he's done this year. And here's the secret that that um, people aren't paying attention to: the Patriots did not draft Mac Jones to be the next Tom Brady. No. no what they not. drafted Mac Jones to do is run their effing offense. The way they want it to be designed. Yes. Belichick and Kraft on the same page, organization, well run, all the things that we talked about. They know their job is to put more talent around him. The reason they got Mac Jones is because he was the most NFL ready. He would be able to grasp the concepts of their offense quicker. And also, he's not a prima donna quarterback that they were going to have to pay. $250 million in the third year, right? So they can ride out this rookie contract Which and then also pay him, you know, whatever as he is going along in this offense. They're ahead of schedule. The, the, the thing that differentiates the Patriots organization from every other organization right now is that they have a plan and they stick to it no matter what. So they, is he they having have a big, plan? You say it right first. They have a, a plan. Absolutely, he's having a big, bit of a slump. He's a rookie. This is his first year in the NFL. Yes. So they're ahead of schedule, and they're yeah. in the playoffs, and they challenged for the division. At one point in the season, they were even the number one seed in the AFC. Right. All that is ridiculous that that is happening with a rookie quarterback at the helm. From a, from a school that doesn't traditionally, isn't historically known for, for producing top-flight quarterbacks, right? Right. Like, more recently, yes, Alabama, but it took saving a not while. Historically. No, not historically. Matt no. Jones wasn't considered part of that shift. No. That started with Tua. Right. Action, um, where they were going to go more pass happy all the time. 
So um, Matt Jones has exceeded every expectation I could have possibly had for him and actually worries me that they're this far ahead of schedule. I'm worried. I'm as a fan of a team in that division, I'm worried about that progress. So that should say it all. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you 100 percent I just it, but yeah, it, if you wanted to find the 2021 22 Patriots specifically by quarterback play, I would argue A, you're missing a lot of the picture. Um, but if you just want to look at us specifically through the quarterback play. Then there was a high during the seven game, absolutely. And now there's a bit of a plateau that's happening specifically yeah. with Mac Jones play. I would agree with that. Yes, I could not argue against that point. But the Patriots are so much more than Mac Jones. Yeah. If any franchise is so much more than their quarterback, it's the Patriots. Yeah. It, 2021, 22 Patriots. Yeah, no. He, again, rookie quarterback in the playoffs. Um, and like you said, and this is the most important thing you said out of all that is the fact that they will not have to pay him. And they're going to surround him with pieces through either free agency, drafting, whatever, developing. And, you know, year three, year four, you know, it's going to be, you know, like I said. That's their three, job, number one. If you don't surround him with comparable talent, he will only go so far as that. Talent. He's He's not. He's not the talent, the transcendent. I, everybody acknowledges this. Right. Honestly. Everybody. Yeah. Acknowledges this. this is not a secret. This is not something Patriots don't know. This is not, he, he's not that talent that can elevate the level of everyone around him. No, he's not Herbert. No. No, 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 he is not. You will not mistake him for Herbert no. No. at all. No, he's not. Which is but fine. He's completely competent and capable of running a very, very complex offense. Yes. And like I said, when Herbert plays Belichick, Belichick humbles Herbert. And that's because he confuses the hell out of Herbert and the rest of the coaches. Um, he coaches circles around all of them. So that's what I mean by in, able to pick up. They fell in love with Matt Jones' brain, for lack of a better way of saying it, and his ability to grasp those mature concepts quicker because of his development not only where he was maturity-wise, but also the offensive style that he played in college. Herbert didn't play in that offense. He didn't play with State Saban and that coaching staff and that institution and that, that uh, you know, um, NFL factory. Right. So there's going to be a learning curve. Um, you know, there's going to be a learning curve. And so uh, – Joe Burrow's a problem. That's just made me think Joe Burrow's such a problem. He's yeah. such a problem. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're but yeah, the but yeah. he's yeah. fine. He's ahead of schedule. He's fine. Yeah. Nobody worry about Mac Jones. He's fine. No, he's good. He's good. He's as long as Belichick is coaching, he's good. Um, I gotta, I go, I gotta go back to dis disappointments because I forgot one and I just I just remembered it. Gotta I gotta get on pro football focus. Um I have a lot of respect for their analysis and they, they rate the players and you see them on Sunday Night Football and their rankings. All pro team came out uh, this week uh, and they had the quarterbacks and no Aaron Rodgers. Brady's first team, Joe Burrow yeah. was second team. Yeah. Um, listen, I'm not, it's, it's so many analytics that these, I, and I follow, I follow them, I follow DVOA, Football Outsiders and that's what we need to do. We need to come up with some analytics in a certain sport that nobody understands, but but that people are obsessed with. That's what you need to do for our retirement plan. We need to do because it's so much shit. There's so many analytics out here and stats and numbers out here in these sports, especially in football. Now that it's like I don't even know how to quantify what is some of the shit that y'all talking about. But apparently, Aaron Rodgers' his schedule as in comparison to those other two quarterbacks, wasn't up to par, especially he missed the Kansas City game. And that hurt him from that standpoint of pro football focus. Uh, by the way, a quick side note, um, was blown away by, I couldn't help it, it, it opened, opened up a wound because Trent Williams, the former Washington football offensive tackle was number one rated player. Um, he's done nothing but flourish since he left our toxic 
organization to be just continue his Hall of Fame career and be, be all pro both years that he was with San Francisco and to a point to where he only has given up like 14, he played 14 games this year, only gave up like 12 pressures. So like he literally was, they had him rated the best player in the sport from a rating standpoint, not the highest rating. So, you know, salute to, you know, shout out to him. He, he deserves it after just that debacle that they, that his career ended with us. That shit, shit still, just, I'll never, ever live, forgive that, that bullshit. They literally only, almost killed this dude, like literally. But anyway. Um, yeah, no Aaron Rodgers. Here, here's what I'll say. And I'm not breaking down every stat known to mankind. I have two eyes. And my two eyes tell me, told tells me, they told me that Aaron Rodgers not only is MVP of the league, but was the best um was the best quarterback in football. Actually. That's what my eyes told me. So uh I disagree with pro football and you know, disagree with their, you know, from the, with them from that standpoint. I think he, if he's not first team, he got to be second team. You can't leave him off the team. <laughs> you can't leave Aaron Rodgers off any all pro team that you come up with. I agree. Like, yeah. So, uh, what were your thoughts on that when you saw that? I don't, I don't have any big, big time thoughts on that. It's, I mean, it's obviously, it's, uh, not obviously, feels personal. Aaron Rodgers is great. Nobody needs to even right. clock yeah. and make yeah. that argument. That, that's not even a thing. Um, so it like I, I think that was a way a you know a subtle dig at that's a, a non subtle dig at, at him and his antics this year, and they right. didn't want to. Yeah. That's my assessment of that situation. Yeah, and, and and who knows? It may it may even you know cost him the MVP because um, you know. I actually like, think Tom Brady's the MVP. I do. That dude is just unbelievable. You look at his stats. This is it's insane. It's insane. At his age, it's insane. It doesn't even make and sense. I don't see it. No, 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 no. I'm not doing the age. Actually, that's the same shit they do with LeBron. You know, no, that age, like I, we know Tom Brady is the GOAT, but I'm not – I don't care about his age in terms of that weighing my thoughts about him being MVP. I'm just looking at yeah, – Well, then look I, at his stats. He's the MVP. Who, who I thought was the best player at the position this year, and I thought it was Aaron Rodgers. It's so, Tom Brady. But – um. I mean, Brady, I would not be surprised with Brady. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a favorite to win MVP. The only reason they don't give it to Brady is because Brady has all the accomplishments. I mean, it's all political. I mean, like, everything we're talking about is political. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, two, two, bad, if, two best quarterbacks in football, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Like, just, like, off that. And then you can have arguments about 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 the others. Um, and fan base can throw those in there. But just, I mean, it's... it's they're... First ballot Hall of Famers for a reason. Yeah, and I mean, just, yeah, no, they, I mean, we are, yeah, we all know that uh, from that standpoint. Um, it's all deeply p- political. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers has not been the face of the NFL. Tom Brady's always the face of the NFL. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's too, no too I think that point. more than anything, honestly, surreal will swing this MVP vote. Yeah, I'm saying I told you I wouldn't be surprised. Like, no, I wouldn't be least bit surprised if, if Tom Brady won the award. I say I say if I said if I had a vote, it would be Aaron Rodgers. But I'm not. I, I think Tom, Tom Brady could easily win the award. I'm not. We get. I'm not debating. My that point at all. is Aaron Rodgers didn't help himself by what he did this year. No, no, not at all. No, if it would, no, if it was going to be a, it's not. So to your point, it's not. So it, it's not like insurmountable like it was last year when he threw 48 touchdown passes. Like. It's, it's actually it's, it's very much debatable. Last so, year that he did this year, huh? No, but I'm saying no. If he would have, if he would have had the type of year, no. If you had the type of year last year, they this year they year last year, then it would, his answers would matter because his numbers were just like no, no, nobody came close to his numbers last year. This year his numbers weren't as good, but I thought he played at the highest level of any quarterback that I saw week in week out. To be honest with you. Um, you are thinking about it purely. See, th- this is the common mistake that you keep that you make in a couple of different situations. When we talked about ownership, the thing is you're equating owners' worth and value to wins and losses. Coaches absolutely are defined by that owners or not. That is not their metric at all. Um, their metric is the value and the esteem they bring to this the shield in their franchise. That's why Jerry Jones will always be a GOAT because of what he did and how much richer he made the other owners. They don't give a damn how many Super Bowls Dallas won 
talking about Dallas. I'm talking about Dallas. I'm talking about, about, how you talking about now, Dallas. I'm talking now, about now, now I'm going to Aaron Rodgers. See, I'm going, I'm I'm combining two points, Ralph. Okay, go ahead. Um, the 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 hitting in there is you're only looking at the stats on the field. I am saying the thing that loses him the MVP is the antics off the field. Y'all agree. His numbers could have been just as stellar as last year. The antics, and he pulls the same stuff he does there, it knocks him down automatically. Well, I, agree. I, disagree. I, I disagree with that. I, think numbers, I know, I, I know you do, and that's what I'm saying. That's what you do. You, 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 you don't put enough stock into the human element. Not the numbers, not just wins and losses, the human element. The political things. No, the I'm things just definitely no. I, I without like question, it's political. But I'm saying my point to you is is no. Without question, it's political. But my point to you is it's close enough with the with the numbers between him and, and Brady this year to a point to where they can give it to Brady and, and with with the antics and politics. Here, last I, year I don't think it would be. Last year I don't think it would have the antics. Would no, have last been. year, last year it wasn't a debate. That I that I. That's agree. my point. That's 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 not overall. That's my point. That I agree. I agree. I do feel like you're disrespecting Brady a little. You I'm not. Crazy. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. By the way, that's your no, friend. I'm not. I'm that not dis- you're saying saying that Aaron Rodgers was the best quarterback in the league is not disrespectful to Brady. Come on now. I didn't say he, Aaron Rodgers. I didn't say consideration. I Look no. That. Without question, he just yeah. I, 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 how about so how about disrespecting Tom Brady? Brady. Brady should be the MVP. I don't think he should be. That's my, but I think I have no problem. If Brady wins the MVP, I have no problem with it. I have no problem with it. But I'm not, I have a disrespect Tom Brady by by picking Aaron Rodgers to win the MVP. I don't don't know how that, how is that disrespect? I didn't pick uh, Pat Mahomes. How did that disrespect Tom Brady? You say Joe Burrow. (laughs) Right, exactly. I didn't say yes. If I would have said Joe Burrow, then that's disrespectful. That is really disrespectful. Saying Aaron Rodgers is MVP over Tom Brady is not disrespectful. Nope, Joe Joe Burrow's the MVP. Joe Burrow. He will be. He will be one of these days, um, sooner or later. Um, Because you know, speaking of Joe Burrow, I got before we get to the NBA, you you read what this. what this scout, not scout, but what what a what a, what a personnel person said about Joe Burrow a couple weeks ago? I, I remember seeing a headline about it. He was well, like, he was like, he so, so he basically stupid. said that he's that that his upside is not that high, and that he um you remember you, we have to remember how old he is coming out of college that he really doesn't have that he, he can't get that much better than what he is now. And I'm like, well. So he's pretty, he's great right now. So, I mean, does he have to get that much better to be dominant for the next decade? <laughs> what are we talking about here? I was like, we must have been from Baltimore. That's got my, <laughs> I was like, this is to be one of the dumbest person. This is one of the, I mean, normally I'm, I'm normally I'm into when personnel people give anonymous quotes and I'm like, especially on like advanced scouting or playoffs and, Things of that nature, you'll see it in the NBA where an anonymous scout or personnel person says about a player or a team. But this was some, I was like, I'm like, you sure this is a personnel person in the NFL? Like, who who said I mean, this? Scouts have said so many different things. It wasn't even a scout, it was a personnel person, uh, somebody that works in the NFL front office. It was that person, it wasn't a scout. Yeah, this was a front office person. Yeah, just wrong. Yeah, I was like, okay, whatever. Um, Couple of real thoughts before we head out. Uh, we haven't spoken about the NBA in a uh, in a while. Um, some definitely, but you know, listen, the NBA has been great this year. I know there's been a lot with the COVID and stuff like that, and I know that that hasn't thrilled fans, um, paying fans, especially seeing G League players. But I'm sure. But um, overall, the NBA, the storylines, the amount of talent that there is, uh, night in night out, has been great to watch. Um, we haven't spoken in a while about it um, since this happened. What your thoughts on Kyrie with a basically a semi return to Brooklyn? Because he cannot play in all the games. He can only play excuse me, in, in away games because of the vaccine mandate in New York. Uh, give me a couple of thoughts. Um, desperation. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest with you, Will. I'm one of those people that um, the sheer number of players that have been out in and out have made it feel so disjointed for right. me. Um, so I'll link that with Kyrie's return. It was, 
it was the worst of worst situations, right? Like, like, like they literally needed somebody to fill a roster spot. Right. Like they did not have enough players to compete in one game, right? Like that, that's bad. Yeah. And so, um, and so it is an act of desperation. That's that's honestly how I can how I can frame it. Um they literally didn't have enough players to be competitive on, on the floor. And so they had Kyrie act in desperation on that. Um, I'm trying to think, do, is there anything else interesting? And, and he's looked, meh, since he got, he's looked like he's somebody who's been off the court for a while. So if there is any impact to this, I don't think we'll feel it to the playoffs anyway. Yeah, um, listen, it was like to your point. It was definitely clear in desperation. There's no question that Durant was logging a lot of minutes. Uh, they had, like you said, like a lot of teams, a few, like a number of teams, uh, COVID issues, um, protocols, and what have you, with the with the countries it, it has experienced over the last two years. Um, I'll say this. I'll say this from a big picture standpoint. Unless he gets vaccinated and can and can compete in all the games. I don't care how many role playoff games he, he can play. They're not winning a championship. I'm sorry. You, you can't have a part-time player that just in terms of – I've watched enough basketball, especially in the last five years as far as chemistry and synergy and everything that goes into winning a championship. It's not going to work. It's not going to work, especially in the Eastern Conference. Like, Milwaukee is like that. When 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 Miami gets healthy, they are a problem. Um, I'm leaving out a team. Damn, Chicago. Chicago is a big problem. I because I, I was going to say I called myself. I, I lied a little bit when I was saying talking yeah, about. You, I'm sure players. you watch Chicago. Chicago is a big problem. Yeah, yeah, I love watching Chicago. Yeah, I they mean. are literally. Yeah, they along with probably Memphis are literally my two favorite teams to watch yeah. night in night out. Um, yes, and that does include the Lakers for those who are wondering. Um, they're not. I wouldn't think the Lakers are even the top fifteen on my list to watch right now, uh, as far as NBA teams go. Maybe not. Maybe not even top twenty. But anyway, um, they're not fun team to watch. No, they're, they're not at all. Not. Um, yeah, I, you you just not. We watch enough sports to know that this is not. I mean, uh, wait, wait, really pause really quickly with the Lakers. All while I'm watching games, I'm just like, yo, do y'all have to be working things out in real time all the time? Yeah, that's no yeah. Impact ever. <laughs> like, like all the time they're working out something, working out the style. Like what? Like when? When is this gonna come together in any shape or form? It's not. <laughs> 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 let me let you. Let me let me fast forward to the end of the movie. Well, it's not. Yeah. Not with this. Not with this roster. Yeah, it's not. Fair. Very fair. Um, they listen. I get into the Lakers a little bit. I've seen this movie before. Yeah. I saw yeah. this in 2013, excuse me, yep. rest in peace, Kobe, 2012, 2013. Yep. We well, trying, to get, trying to get the super team, Howard. Dwight Howard, yep. Steve Nash, and yep. uh, yeah, we had Kobe, Gasol, like, oh, the big four, and yep. no, nah, yep. brother, nah, no, no. Your point, you do need team chemistry. You do need yeah, these- it look, it's, it's and you, not only you need chemistry, you kind of, your pieces kind of have to fit. They, like you kind of like your pieces have to kind of make sense. Like really, it would have made like I'm looking at what Alex Caruso and Kyle Kuzman grabbing 22 rebounds and what those players are doing and what Buddy Hill could have looked like in a Laker uniform and I'm like yeah we we kind of could have used some of those two or three of those players. Yep. Yeah, and and, and we again we when we said this uh, when we talked about last talked about the NBA. No one, and you you mentioned this. No one was 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 craving, uh, clamoring for Russell Westbrook. No one, no, no. no one. And this is this is why. <laughs> it's like no, no one was. Craving. And he by by and by the way, he hasn't even been. The, he has not even been the most disappointing Laker. He's clearly been Anthony. No, no, he hasn't been. Clearly been Anthony Davis. <laughs> I, I, I thought about this a couple of days ago, and it's, it's a harsh reality, but it is going to be reality um, for, for Laker fans moving yeah. forward. The best 
what you saw on Anthony Davis in 2020 at the bubble will probably be the best you'll ever see him moving forward. That probably was the peak apex Anthony Davis. From a health standpoint, level of play, aggression, yeah, yep. Not going to get any better moving forward. Not going to like it. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I resorted my fate, our fate months ago in terms of how this, how this is going to end. So now, you know, you can shift the narrative to LeBron, year 19, putting up numbers and, you know, Kareem's record. That Yeah, might as well just get on that narrative right now. Who's your Lakers? 38,000 points, whatever, 40,000 if he plays long enough. You're going to play with Bronny. Yep. Get on that narrative now. Cause you ain't, you're not getting any titles. Again, sniffing at this. You, they might, they lucky if they get to, to the first round. They, you know, so. Um, John Moran. Um, every so often you see a player, a good player, take a leap in his second or third year and then become a great player. And I think. We are seeing that with one. I know, and I think I know we're seeing that with one John Morant. This guy is just from night in to night out, maybe my favorite player to watch right now. Um, he is spectacular. He is controlled aggression. He's a winner from a standpoint of he makes winning plays. He's about the team. He's about. Um, they're going to be, he's a problem and they're, that team's going to be a problem because they, they have a lot, they have a lot of nice pieces, very good pieces. They can have, they have some trade chips where they can acquire, a, you know, somebody of note if they want to, or just develop um, moving forward. They are extreme. They have a top coach in the league. He's one of this guy, their coach is one of the top, like eight or nine, ten coaches in the league. I know that's not hard to be in the NBA to be honest with you, because there's about some some bad coaching, some bad coaching. But this dude can coach. This guy can coach. He, the team plays hard every night. They play to their strengths. Um, they're gonna be they're gonna be a they're gonna be a big tough out in the playoffs. I'm not saying they're gonna go to get to the finals. I still think that goes through Golden State and Phoenix. Um, but they they're gonna be a they're gonna be a major problem. In the, uh, moving forward, like this team is not going anywhere. He is the number one reason, and he, again, he's phenomenal to watch night in and night out. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's very cool. Um, because you saw him make that leap real time in the playoffs last year. Yes, in the play in, in the playoffs. Yes, yeah. Could he continue that on? And then continue it through an entire season. And man, has he. Has he. And he is just, he quite simply figured it out in that playoff game and said, I'm the I'm the guy. Yeah. I'm actually one of the, like, I am one of the best NBA players in the world. Yeah. yeah. Every night like that. He has no fear. He has no, no fear. No. I no. love, what did you say, controlled? Controlled I, aggression. He, yeah. so... And I said this. I said this uh, in the playoffs last year, and as he was developing last year, I said he is. He's like I said. He's. I said. I think. I, I believe he's going to be a better version of Russell Westbrook. To be honest with you, I really do. He already has a better shot. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not I mean. That, I mean, you you might have a better shot at this point. That was that was. He might. I mean, my goodness. He, I mean, boy. But it was there. It's there. It's too obvious. Nah, yeah, yeah, it was low hanging. Come on, you know, you know. I mean, come on. I, I watch the game, watch him every night. You know, yeah. You know, I was thinking about Westbrook today, man, and how I've just completely flipped on Westbrook um, from years past. Like, I really did not always despise Westbrook's game. Like, I was a, I, I was a, when he was with Oklahoma City and Kevin Durant days. I was a Westbrook guy, to be honest with you. I really was. Like, I used to defend him, um, and I think. What happened? I know. I don't think I know what happened. Here's what happened with Westbrook. He became a victim of his own success with the triple doubles. Um, the worst thing that could have happened from from his, for his game in terms of winning or having an impact on winning was averaging triple double four straight years. If he does it one year, you do it one year, and then you just focus on evolving and developing, and continue to develop and evolving your jump shot and 
making better decisions and things that and what have you. When he goes with that, that he really got caught up in the triple double, and it became just it's, it became just about it didn't even become about winning or about anything else. Anything else, it just became about triple doubles for him. Um, I'm going to go even a level before that. Go ahead. Here's the simple fact. We wanted Westbrook to be more than he was capable of being. Um, a piece like Westbrook should be a piece. Oklahoma City in a variety of different ways screwed that entire thing. Oh, no, up. Without question. They enabled him. No, they enabled him. They, 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 yeah, they enabled him. Needed fantastic coaching yes, for that. 100%. Fantastic coaching. And the biggest thing, they tried to overwhelm teams with pure talent. Yep. That's not, and yep. what you needed was skill, particularly like imagine Westbrook in like a Draymond Green role, right? right. But you yeah. would have needed the clout of a coach and the visionary of a coach to be able to pull something like that off. Like what, what I mean. So that's one part. What I mean by we wanted it to be more, we wanted scoring point guards dominant score ball dominant point guard scoring point guards to be championship pieces derrick rose uh yeah. westbrook yeah and fundamentally not they just aren't and I mean, yeah what, so what like to your point it was time to well, change steph curry, is, steph curry is though westbrook was was and eh, we're not doing that we there's a whole remember what i said about unique coaching visionary yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. For that yeah. whole part yeah thank you yeah. Um, so, so, uh, so, um, by the time that it would have been beneficial for somebody to really like come at Westbrook and suggest those changes, he's, he was too set in the Allen Iverson, Allen Iverson mentality, yeah. exactly what you're saying, where he's just too locked in to, I have to get all the things. I'm the one I have to get all the things. He's just too locked into that mode. You can't change his spots this way in his career if he's not willing, if he's not personally willing to acquiesce. And Westbrook has never been personally willing to acquiesce to anybody. No, no, no. Yeah, it, like, yeah, no, that it. There's yeah, a they, reason, yeah, there's a they, reason they, why. They, go ahead. Never win a championship. There's a reason why. There's a reason why. Right. But because they're the best players in their marker, the team, we want them to be that guy. And it just hit, just, it just wasn't going to happen. No. Never was going to happen. No. It just wasn't. Yeah. 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 I mean, again, you again, going back to Oklahoma City, like that has to be squarely on Sam Presley. I mean, I, Sam Presley gets lauded for the draft picks, and rightfully so. Like he drafted, I mean, he's one of the best drafters and developers. In terms of that, how they develop talent um, and how they grew as a group in in, in the NBA. I mean, they, you know, Durant, Westbrook, Harden, and Ibaka, and, and, and a litany of, of young, talented players, but never landed. In, he never got the coach. Never got the coach. Uh, so you know, that, you know, that's that. And it's going again. Yeah, it, it doesn't end well. Sounds great, but you do got to coach him. You do got to coach him. Yes. Yes, coaching coaching matters. Yeah, coaching still, for yeah. talented players as well. Yes. So there has to be something to separate more than talent. Right. Yeah. No question about it. Um he made Philly made the exact same mistake. The exact same mistake. That's why I got top. Oh, I'll never be more annoyed at anything than the process. And Ben Simmons is your next topic. So that's why I brought it up. Well, I mean, are you talking about Philly with oh, yeah, you talking about you, you're not talking about the same exact mistake. Right. Yeah, you talking about you talking about this. You talking about Joel and B. This Philly. This Philly. Yeah. Philadelphia yeah. seventy six. Yeah. This team. Yeah. So yeah, we get to Ben Simmons. Uh, good Got segue. That. Um. So, I'm watching the season unfold. Okay. There's, of course, there's been no movement with Ben Simmons. Um. Philadelphia has played extremely well over the past month. Uh, Joel and B is playing like an MVP. He's been dominant since he got back from the injury. And you're hearing reports, especially you're hearing reports, especially today, that basically the two sides, Ben Simmons, Clutch, and Philadelphia are are they are at a stalemate, and that yeah, they, they, Ben Simmons willing to sit out the rest of the season, 
and Philadelphia is willing to waste a MVP caliber season by Joel Embiid, who we know it could get hurt at any moment in order to wait for this deal that is never going to happen. Like no one is trading a superstar to get Ben Simmons. And they said that Dale Morey and Philadelphia has been steadfast in terms of, hey, we only want a top-notch player uh, for Ben Simmons. When there are other deals out there as far as getting... We want a billion dollars. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. When, when there are other deals on the table that could make that can help them get closer to a Milwaukee or closer to Chicago and, and, and what have you, I guess I just don't under... like. I don't understand, like, and we, we talked about this a few months back, that this is a situation where everybody's dumb. Um, ben Simmons for not coming in and just balling out and then getting traded, uh, increasing his value. And now Philadelphia, to me, is even that, now Ben Simmons is losing money, but Philadelphia is now doing the cut your nose to spite your face. Like, like yo, you have Joel Embiid playing out of his mind and healthy for now. And you're just going to waste a all NBA MVP caliber season and act like, well, you know, he's still young. He'll be back for the next three or four years. No, no, he could get, he could get hurt walking out of the shower tonight. Like, I, again, I don't get, I don't get the logic. And then you heard, then you hear reports that they want to put Tobias Harris in the deal with Ben Simmons and move. I'm like, what, what the fuck? I'm like, what, what's, I, I just don't know what, I don't know what's going on with, with Philadelphia um, right now from that standpoint. I don't know what their – I don't know what the end game is for this. For, I'm go, I'm, I was go just going to say, stop you right there. The reason why you're confused is because they don't know what the end game is. <laughs> they have no plan. When we talked about this earlier, we were absolutely right. It was about both sides. Now right. this is clearly on Philadelphia. He did what he did. He said what he said. What yep. are you going to – and their answer has been, we have no clue. Yeah. We just have no clue. We have no clue. We're just going to continue doing the same thing and hope something else happens. And so, yeah, what they're trying to do is put together the best package to maximize the value. The problem is, and I'm going to go to a poker analogy, but I think this is a poker analogy most people can completely understand. You can raise me all in and want all my money, but if you show me that you have four aces, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No, I see them. I see it. I see what you got, and I don't want to lose all my money. Their hands, the Philly's hand is completely exposed. People yeah. know who Ben Simmons is. They know that they can't come to size. They know that they like it. They can simply just wait this out and. I um, get Ben Simmons for a way cheaper price than whatever Philly wants in their hopes and dreams um, at night. Um, and so why in the world, if I am any competent franchise, and honestly incompetent franchise, would I go over there and I would look and say, that's a dumpster fire. He wants out. You know what? Let me give valuable assets to get this player that already doesn't want to be with that team. Yeah. What franchise is going to do that? So what Philly needs to do is readjust their expectations and get the best package available. The only problem is, does the best package available actually increase their chances of winning? I don't know that because I don't know all the packages that have been really talked about. What I do know is that they are truly effed because everybody knows what cards you're playing. So in that analogy, I lost, but it could be the other way around where I'm showing my winning hand to everybody and they're like, nah, we're not going to give you the money. Philadelphia is showing this, this is not even winning hand. They're showing just a piss poor hand and being like, give us everything. And everybody's like, we're good. <laughs> you can actually leave the table now because bye. Nobody's trying to hear that. So, um, they're desperate, and honestly, honestly, my gut instinct says they thought Simmons would break. Yeah, and when 
Yeah. They didn't, didn't have a plan. B. They had no plan. No. No. That that is my honest reaction. Yes. If I give them that makes more sense. Competence. What then? What I lean on is that they want more than they can ever possibly get because everybody knows the cards that they have in their hand. And it doesn't matter what you say. We all see what cards you're holding. He no. doesn't want to be there. We can simply wait and get him as a free agent. So why would I give up one single solitary asset for something I can pick up on the free agent market? Well, no, he's not going to be a free agent. It's, it's, I mean, he's still got four years left on his contract. Um, the thing is, they... Why would I give you an asset that means anything to me when I can simply out Wait, you. wait, you right. We don't have, yeah, we don't have to get Ben Simmons right now. That's no. that's most teams just like no. most teams are in a position where they either are set with who they have or Ben or or he's just not worth it. Um, right. in terms of the assets they have to deal with, with no. that Philly wants. So it's like, no, and to, the GM, to point, you cannot look your owner in the eye and give up a valuable asset. No, but Ben, no, no, not for this situation. No, 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 it, it's just no. Like especially the foundation project, absolutely. Um, but give up somebody valuable? No. no, no. And and by the way, these next two drafts are are loaded. So I'm definitely not not a draft pick as well. Not not any draft picks. Not doing that. Um, <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, two couple of points on what you say as far as packages uh, that are possibly available. Yes, right now you may not get a package that puts you over the top, but it beats nothing. <laughs> it beats no package, number one. Yep. And number two, as each as each day goes by, hour, minute, his his value goes down that much more. So simple economics, really. It's very yeah, it's very simple. It's it's very it's like it's it's, it's as easy as one, two, three from that standpoint. And as it depreciates in value the longer that you have it, whether yep. it's a car, it doesn't whether, matter. Yep, you know, yep, doesn't, yep. So, because the more it is used, the more he plays basketball, the more wear and tear is on his body, regardless. So, just it's just simple economics. Yeah, it's no, nah, they, yeah, they have no clue. Why yeah. the ultimate conclusion you have to land on is they had no plan, they thought yeah. he would. Yeah, yeah. No they they overplayed. Yeah, or completely overplayed their hand. That's it. They miscalculated. Yeah, miscalculated. It's just that simple. Um, Clay Thompson being back, uh, great. That was great to see. That was fantastic. Very like that because it I, it was a point where I was like, ooh, I don't. This might not end well. Um, after two years, and you know, you're talking about knee and Achilles. Um, and look good. I mean, 18 shots, 20 minutes. You know, 17 points. Um, he's only going to get better as he gets, gets more reps. And they are, you know, along with Phoenix, the team to beat in the Western Conference. And uh, along with, say, Milwaukee and Miami and Chicago, probably, they're probably, they're probably about, you know, Brooklyn, I still toss them in there with on sheer talent, probably about six, probably about five or six teams that could, that could win the championship this year. That could possibly get to the channel. Well, maybe not five, but maybe five or six that can get to the, get to the finals. Maybe four or five that could possibly win it. Um, it feels not all the way open, but kind of open a little bit um, this year. Um, we'll see what happens with the trade deadline and what have you. Um, so, and don't forget about the players who might be coming back. Like, you still, Jamal Murray, uh, you still have Kawhi Leonard, possibly. Um, so there's some guys that might be coming that you know, could be coming back later on in the season. So um, been a, listen, I know COVID has, you know, ran through a lot of sports and, and life in general, but I think for the most part, um, it's been a relatively fun NBA season, especially even with some of the teams that are not that good. Um, there's a lot of talent in the league. You know, even a team like Minnesota can be fun to watch. Um, Cleveland, what's going on in Cleveland has been remarkable. Uh, Evan Mobley is going to be a major force uh, moving forward. Um, so, you know, NBA, you know, got a lot of good things going on for them. A lot of star power as usual. Uh, so, we'll, you know, we'll see how they navigate. Toronto has been, Toronto's played well. Um, 
played extremely well of late. Um, so, you know, a lot going on, got going on in the NBA. Um, so we'll see what happens with the trade deadline. Um, that's going to wrap it up for this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. As always, thanks to one Robert Sapp. We look forward to the playoff games. Um, good luck. Good luck, Buffalo. All right, so we appreciate it. I'll see you next week. Yep, we'll see you next week. That's going to wrap it up for this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. This podcast will be up. Uh, in a few hours. Um, remember, coming up, not in the not so distant future, well, in February, because we, we already saw the, the, the trailer, I'm going to be doing season five of Snowfall. So, definitely looking forward to that season five of Snowfall. So, I will see you next time. Have a great rest of your evening. So long.